Good afternoon. The concept of the third generation that I've spoken about in writing and in previous videos. I'm going to clarify what that is in its own video. So if anyone has any questions, this is the video you can go to or that I can tag in other videos. This concept of the third generation. When I've spoken about it before, it was, uh, I use the terminology magic spell in previous videos, magic spell of sickness. What it is, is it's gaslighting. It's used in history, it's used in politics, it's used in religion. So specifically speaking about our ancestors, our northern pagan ancestors, and how it was used against them. When forced conversion took place, and that is what happened to all of our northern pagan ancestors, was forced conversion, religious persecution by the three cults of Abraham, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And then an indoctrination process, a gaslighting process. All you have to do is you, you turn to the Old Testament and look at Numbers 31, 17 through 19. Forced conversion. What did they do? They say, you kill off all the men, you kill off all the boy children, you kill off all of the women who have had children, and you keep the young virgin girls as sex slaves. And any posterity that results from them are now going to be gaslighted with whatever religious tenets or edicts that you teach them. Matthew 10, 34 through 39, is the same thing in the New Testament. So no one can say, well, that was the Old Testament. The New Testament changes all that. No, it doesn't. In the New Testament, Jesus's words are that he came not to bring peace, but a sword to separate the family unit and, and ensure that people take up the cross. So what is this, this gaslighting that takes place? Well, in the first generation of the forced conversion process, okay, they, they, our ancestors held on to their old ways, their old beliefs, and even though they were being forced on a weekly basis to attend church, if or a mosque or a synagogue, they were being forced. This was law passed. This was a church edict, and then the, the king would uh, pass it as law that everyone in a new Abrahamic area had to attend these services. Or you were labeled as a heretic, you were labeled as a heathen, you were cast into prisons and dungeons, you were dispossessed of your land, you were maimed, you were tortured, you were murdered, women, you were raped. This is the way the conversion process went throughout all of the northern areas. Is It was very much forced. And there's another element of force that people don't usually think of. And that is the force of starvation, uh, manipulating food sources. Because even if you had a, a country, let's use Sweden, they were the last to convert in the old world. The Christian areas would withhold trade, withhold food. So if the king said, no, we're going to remain pagan, we're going to, to stay with our old gods, then food supplies would be cut off. It wouldn't be too much longer than his people would be starving to death. And then what would happen? The, 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 that king would be replaced by a leader who could feed the people. They'd have to accept Christianity, even if it was superficially. But the people were still in touch with the old gods, the gods of our ancestors. The second generation with this continued forced gaslighting on a weekly basis, on this always being held over your head. The second generation always had their parents that could tell them, teach them the old ways. By the third generation, the first two generations were forgotten about. That third generation would now, they're now so gaslighted that they spew it forth like it's actual fact. We see this in history. 
We see this in religion. We see this repeatedly all over the place. Regardless of facts, you cannot get through to people. You cannot even appeal to common sense because they are gaslighted. They are that third generation forward. So the religious cults of Abraham not only used this, they spoke about it freely. And Mark Twain is one of them. Speaking about the Sandwich Islands, which are the Hawaiian Islands, they called them the Sandwich Islands. And he says, just a quick, quick couple paragraphs here. These people, talking about the, the people of uh, Hawaii, the, the pagans of Hawaii, these people are sentimentally religious, speaking about Christianity. Sentimentally religious, perhaps that describes it. They pray and sing and moralize in fair weather. But when they get in trouble, that is, business, and then they are tolerably apt to drop poetry and call on the great shark god of their fathers to give them a lift. Their ancient superstitions are in their blood and bones, and they keep cropping out now and then in the most natural and pardonable way. I am one who regards missionary work as slow and discouraging labor and not immediately satisfactory in the results. But I am very far from considering such work either hopeless or useless. I believe that such seed sown in savage ground will produce wholesome fruit in the third generation. And certainly that result is worth striving for. But I do not think much can reasonably be expected of the first and second generations. It is against nature. It takes long and patient cultivation to turn the bitter almond into a peach, but we do not refrain from the effort on that account, for, after all, it pays. Now, very interesting that Mark Twain, in that Christian mindset of savage ground, for that is what they called our pagan ancestors, as Christianity brutalized them in the most savage ways. Look at the character they call Charlemagne, what he did across Europe. That is commonplace for the conversion tactics of Christianity, Islam, Judaism. It's in their writings. They were savage. They were barbarians. Uh, it has nothing to do with truth. that has everything to do with greed, money, and making one feel worthless and subjugated to them so that they get more of your money and when you tithe to them. So that is the third generation tactics, the third generation concept. It is gaslighting that is taking place and that gaslighting is fully realized in that third generation, which then teaches it to their young, who teaches it to their young, who teaches it to their young, that you are worthless and you need someone to save you. And that needs to be undone for true paganism to even begin. Anyways, that's where I'll wrap this up. That is the third generation tactics. Until next time, or tills nest to gong. Good health, sir. Mm-hmm.